Hey everybody, welcome to Power to Paint. I'm Derek Wicks and today we're going to learn how to paint a downy woodpecker and uh, some extra textures. So why don't we stop talking and get into the studio and start painting. So the key to uh, doing a nice gradated background with acrylics is doing nice thin coats, uh, multiple ones, but nice and thin, like milky consistency. And then as you can see here, using a hairdryer to dry between coats to, you know, speed up the process. So what I want to uh, get across here is that very, 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 very thin coats. Uh, don't try to go opaque. People get into big trouble when they try to do too thick and too opaque a coat in acrylics and what happens is you trap air you get little bubbles you can't get rid of and it's just a big mess so just do nice thin coats and right here I'm just going from a yellow at the top to a greenish color at the bottom so the yellow at the top is just a uh, mixture with some uh, cadmium yellow medium and then down at the bottom I've just added a little bit of vivid lime green into it and I'm just kind of creating a subtle change right now and I want to get rid of a lot of the white of the board first then I'll deal with changing colors so here I can start adding in a little bit of uh, cadmium yellow lights just to warm up a corner and I just start working that in wet on wet now if you find that the acrylics are drying too fast on you there is a little something you can use to help you out and this is uh, Liquitex acrylic retarder a couple of drops of this into the paint will make the paint stay open or wet a little bit longer and it makes it a lot easier to blend okay so right now you can see that I've got oh, three or probably four coats on this and now I start adding in different colors and I'm going to blend in little darker greens in the bottom corner to initiate some grasses and I'm uh, putting in a little bit of uh, raw siennas in the, the left hand corner there okay <laughs> So I slowed the video down to real time now to show you how to finish things off. And this is just a sponge and I'm just applying wet water. That's just water from the sponge. There's no paint on it yet. And then you can start applying the paint once the surface has a little bit of damps. Now, the key to this process is keeping a, a wet surface and a wet sponge. When I say wet sponge, I don't mean dripping wet with loads of water. I mean, dump it into your container take it out squeeze the water out of it so it still has lots of moisture to it but it's not dripping at all and that's the consistency you want to start applying this paint and blending it into each other and all you do is you just apply your colors wet with soft soft tapping motions here you can see I'm taking a little bit of sienna and adding it into the bottom left corner and then what I'll do is I'll rinse out my uh, sponge and now it'll just be clean water and I'll start blending by tapping the colors into each other. Now, as long as the board stays wet, you can blend and blend and blend and blend and blend. But if you find that the paint's starting to get a little dry, and how you'll know is it'll start getting tacky and it'll start kind of, you'll feel a sponge sticking to the board a little bit. Stop, get a hairdryer out, blow dry it, and then start again. The key is keeping the wet board nice and wet. And what this does is it's going to create a nice even film across your board and giving you those nice subtle color changes. And it's how you do a nice blend with acrylics. 
All right, don't use any of the retarders here. You don't need to because the water, it really, in essence, is your retarder, okay? So just blend until you feel that you've got a nice gradation from top to bottom. And then the last thing I do is with clean uh, sponge, so get all the paint out of it, just do a tapping through the whole board to take off all that moisture. And there you go. There's a nicely blended board. Now, uh, you could do this with an airbrush, but I don't want to because I want some of this real strong brush stroke. And let's some, show you some of the brush stroke. You see the brush stroke there? It's subtle. But this is going to be grasses later, so I want to leave that texture in. So don't sponge so much that you get rid of it all.
So again, I thought I'd just point out that uh, when you're laying down acrylics, do it in layers, all right? No matter what style you have, if you're more of a loosey-goosey like Bateman that has very transparent build-up washes or a little more opaque like myself, it's all in layers, okay? Uh, unless you're uh, more of an impasto painter, uh, acrylics are better laid in thinner coats. Uh, and when I say thinner, I mean the consistency of about milk. Don't lay it on nice and thick like butter unless you're using a palette knife painting or something like that. If you're trying to do high detail painting, you want fairly thin layers and two to three of them. And you're building up textures as you go from layer to layer, okay? So I just wanted to point that out that don't Pound on the paint. Uh, if you do, you'll get air trapped between layers. You'll get little bubbles. The only way to get rid of those is to sand it down with a light 400 sandpaper and then paint over it again, okay? So nice, thin layers. And as you can see, we're getting into here. I've laid down my areas. Now I can start breaking them up and start creating the beginning of uh, our structure and our form. So there's our uh, underpainting or our blocking in done. We've got a good structure, shape, form, good sense of lighting, great warms, great cools, and we're ready to go and start to uh, break this up and detail it. So that's the end of part one. I'll have part two available for you in two to three days. Until then, happy painting, everyone.